In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a simple drop frame. I use this method of framing for any images that I upload to web galleries. This image is one of my pet portraits of a very beautiful Siamese cat reclining. And I'm going to create this drop frame. First thing I need to do is to change this background layer into a free, free floating layer. And to do that I click on the layer, I double click on the layer in the, in the layers palette to bring up this little dialog box which will ask me what I want to call my layer. I'm quite happy to call it layer zero so I'll accept that and click OK. And now you can see this is called layer zero and the little lock icon has gone which means I can add layers below it. Now I want to add a layer below it and I'll do that by holding the control key down on the keyboard and going to the bottom of the layers palette and clicking on the new layer um, icon which is the second to last next to the recycle bin at the bottom of the layers palette. So I just click on that and there's my new layer. It's called layer 1 and it's underneath my main layer. Keeping that layer active I now want to enlarge the canvas size so that this image is actually floating within the layer. So I go image, canvas size and I'm add, going to add a couple of centimeters all the way around. So I'll make this 47 and this 47 here. Okay. So here we are. The background layer has now been, or the bottom layer has now been enlarged, and our main layer is floating within it. And we've got a nice even board all the way around. Now I need to fill that with the colour of my web gallery background, which in this case is going to be white, which I've got here as my foreground colour. So I'll get the paint bucket tool and just click on the image and I've turned it to white. If I turn this image off you'll see it's all white. Okay. You need to choose whichever colour your web gallery background is to fill this, this layer with. Right, now I'm going to make work on the main image. So I'll select the top layer here with the cat on it and I want to put a drop shadow and some bevel and embossing on it. So to do that, again I go to the bottom of the layers palette and this time I click on the second icon in which has got a little FX on it or it might just have an F on it depending on which version of Photoshop you have. I click on that and it brings out a, an options box of all the various options that you can select. I want both a drop shadow and a bevel and emboss. It doesn't matter which one I click on first because I can still use the others in this same dialog box that comes up next. So if I click on drop shadow here we go, a new dialog box. And you can see you've still got the options, the same options down the side here. Here's our bevel and emboss. So I'll work on drop shadow first of all. Um, I'm not going to go through this in any detail because YouTube only allows me a 10 minute video and I know I'll overrun if I do. So just bear with me and, and accept what I'm taking. The angle of light is the angle at which the lights, the virtual light source is going to cut, hit your image and where and tells you where the shadow is going to appear. So currently it's coming from over here and so if I make this shadow a bit bigger because you can hardly see at the moment by dragging up this distance one you can see the shadow appearing. Now I actually like my shadows to either be at 45 degrees this way or 45 degrees that way. So and I also like my shadows to match wherever, whichever direction they're coming from in the image. So on this image the shadows on this side of the cat so I want my shadow to come across this way. Um, yes you can click and drag the shadow on the image but that was a mistake. So I'm going to just type in 135 which is the angle at which I want the 45 degrees to come. Now obviously I've gone off the scale on my size here and I'm going to put this to 65. These settings will vary depending on the resolution of your image and how large your image is. Uh, so don't take these as gospel for your images. You need to fiddle around to find out what works best for you. For the spread I'm going to move that up to about 20. That's just how far out the shadow starts to spread to enlarge as it goes away from the image. And for the size this is how, much, how diffuse the shadow is going to be. Size, I think, is a very misleading title. I think it should be diffusion. But um, anyway, that's what we've got. And if I drag this up, you see the shadow becoming more and more diffuse. 
and more and more sharp or intense as I take it back down again. I'm going to put it up to about 45. Let's type in 45. There we go. Now I actually think this shadow is a bit dark. If um, if your background's colour is a darker colour, then you might want it this dark by default and stick with the default 75. But I want to bring this down a bit. I'm going to bring it down to 65 or even 60 maybe. Yeah. Uh, perhaps 65. Okay, so I'm happy with that with that colour. Now I just need to bevel and emboss the edge. So we'll click on bevel and emboss. Unfortunately you're not going to see this very clearly with the image this size. Um, so I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just accept the default values and click OK. And then I'll enlarge the image to 100% so you can actually see the bevel and embossing going on at this corner. Okay, so now you see the effects have now appeared um, in your layers palette next to the underneath the layer that you've been working on. And I've got the drop shadow and the bevel and emboss. And I want to edit this bevel and emboss. So I'll double click on it to bring that dialog box back up. And it's got all my original settings. And as I said, I just accepted the de default values. I'm going to actually make this beveling a little bit bigger. So we've got the size here, and if I drag it up, you can see the beveling getting larger or smaller. I'm going to make that leave it at 10. I'm going to leave the soften. That's how again how diffuse it is. I'm going to leave that at zero, and the depth at 100. If I take that up, it becomes sharper. I take it down, it becomes smoother. So I'm going to go leave it as it was, which is fine. The screen, uh, the, the highlight here tells defines how bright the highlighted edge of the bevel is and the shadow, how dark the shadow is. I usually leave the shadow as it is, but the highlight I bring up 200% to make it as bright as possible. Hasn't really noticed a lot on this image, but it does notice. You'll notice the angle of light is the same as what I typed in for the drop shadow, and that's because I've got this little global light box here ticked by which is ticked by default because you want the angle of light to be the same as the shadow if I had the, the light for the bevel coming over here and the, for the shadow over there it looked really very strange in some instances you might want to um, change the angle in which case you can uncheck this box and then you're free to put the angle of lights for each of these individual options where you wish but for now I want to keep that checked and so my angle of light is constant throughout. And that's it. I'll accept it at that. And I'll zoom out. Okay, and there we go. Now all I need to do is flatten the image and it's ready to be saved and uploaded to a website. And in this next image I'll show you how, what it looks like once it's uploaded. And here is the image uploaded to the web gallery. And now you can see the white border around the edge of the image is totally blended into the background of the web page itself. So it looks like it's just sort of hanging off the wall, free floating as it were. For more tips and tutorials on using Photoshop, why not visit my website at www.sally-jane.co.uk.